It will be right at the coalface of the biggest job in nuclear decommissioning. Every single piece of waste removed from our most hazardous building, the Magnox Swarf storage silo, will be picked and sorted by the equipment here. The Talbot manipulator arm and the grabber in the silo emptying plant will be picking and packing legacy waste for decades to come. So it's important we do it right. This new replica test facility at the Sellafield site is crucial. This is where we can train our operators, our future operators, and give them the skills necessary to solve the problems needed as and when we, we get to them within retrievals. It's not just being used to train operators before they start getting the waste out. It will also be a vital test ground once retrievals have begun. There are many unknowns about exactly what's in the silo, so this could be the place where we practice using tools we don't even know we need yet. It was always envisioned that this training rig would support retrievals, so it would be the solution finder and problem solver. So any problems we found in retrievals, items that we don't know about, we, we don't understand, we can come back to this training rig and work up the problems to then take back to retrievals on plant. Able to cut and shear, wash down and move items around, the arm can extend into every nook and cranny inside the cave, exerting up to three and a half tonnes of force and moving on seven different axes. It's past our stringent requirements of operating continuously for 1,200 hours or 50 days without any mechanical issues. So the Talbot has two forms of uh, operability. One is manual control from the operator and the other is torque paths. So a lot of these tasks in cell are repeated over and over again. So a bit like flying a plane, the operator will allow the Talbot to move into a position manually and then the control system will take over and remotely uh, move that Talbot manipulator via a torque path, a bit like autopilot. But it still requires the operator to land the plane or pick up the tool or do the final piece of work. Working the equipment will become a key skill for operators in the silo, but for now the first batch of people being trained to the level where they can use the machinery in a radioactive environment has narrowed to just five. So these five operators will be at the sharp end of retrievals in the haz high hazardous area on site in a building that's got historical waste beneath their feet. They are the people that will reduce the risk of this building. Getting the knack of working the arm is a challenge. So um, to actually move away from me, you, you're pulling towards yourself and to begin with that's quite a challenge because you've got to re rewire your brain almost to, to get yourself to think like that. But after a while it, it starts, you start to almost know what to do and you can start moving not just one joystick on its own but both together to make a movement that, that's more fluid and, and you can trust yourself a little better. When we go in for the grab we have no idea what, what we're going to end up coming out with so when we then go to use the arm to manipulate whatever we're going to put into the skips we could be dealing with anything it could take five minutes to empty it or it could take hours and hours and lots of people trying to try to fathom out what's what to do next you, you can't write any instruction for that there can't, can't be any definitive rules on how we deal with it we have to sort of be intuitive and use our experience as an operator of the set machine to to deal with whatever we're presented with which could be quite a challenge as you can imagine Luckily I've been part of the ROV team and I'm a crane driver in MSSS so I've sort of half got the skills already to use a manipulator. Talking to my mum and dad and I mean from my dad's age point of view all this is futuristic robotic arms and I mean but for us now this is now the present so we've got to learn on these machines and look to the future.